Welcome to Just One Thing, where training gym owners get actionable insights to build their dream business. I'm your host, Summit Seth, and I'm with the legendary Tom Plummer. And over the next 12 minutes or so, we will unpack one thing to help you move forward in your business this week. So let's get started. Well, hello there, Tom, again. Hey, welcome back. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I, like I said, we've been switching this. It should be the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> We're like one of, the, one of those cheap uh, romantic comedies and stuff like that, where it's just like two guys hanging out in a bar and just like, you know, Groundhog Day over and over and over again. We're back. We're back. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with these. I'm learning so much, and I'm sure the listeners are getting amazing tactical advice and nuggets to implement on their own business. So, yeah. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's one of the rare things where I don't get to talk about is you you really want to teach people not the what but it's the why. And if I if I understand the why, I'm much better to solve the what problems later. So what happened in the gym? But the most owners they're so reactionary they hit that, but they don't go back and say why did that happen? Why is it happening? What, what could I have done earlier to make sure that it doesn't happen again? So they, they deal with the, the problem, but they seldom ever solve the problem as looking at the bigger picture. So nothing else I hope is serious helps people see that anytime you have a problem, go beyond the problem, go back to the earlier layer. Why is that problem, problem happening in my gym? And is it bigger than I think it is? And is it something consistent? And what am I doing in this gym that's, what, that's making that happen? Because almost all the time, it's our behavior as owners that cause problems that drive out our own members or hurt our own business. Fair enough. But, but there's some things that are outside the gym owner's control as well. I get the idea about being responsible, taking ownership, all that good. The COVID thing happened, right? Totally outside of my control. But yes, I understand how do I react to the circumstances is my control but um and like we were discussing i've been reading about the delta variant now right it's coming in it's uh, and at the same time i talk to training gym owners and they're exuberant about the the upside they're seeing in the business the gyms are getting packed again this we're still in summers and they're having the best june or best july um now we're in july compared to even 2019 and every signal points to this this boom that's coming in the fitness industry especially in personalized training but then you read about the delta variant you read about other countries going back to shutdowns what happens if this impacts us again the u.s again what do i do now because i'm i'm hoping and i'm wanting and i'm longing for this next positive growth if you will I I spent a lot of time, probably too much time researching this. Um, I put out some letters last year. Most of the, well, not most, I think all of the predictions in the letters. 100% all of them came through, right? I think, I believe, not think, I know you were the first one who predicted 30% of gyms will shut down. And that's exactly what happened. You know, you predicted this is the way to handle um the management of the brand, all of those letters. Like I have printouts of those letters. I sent those letters to people. I even had them on my software saying, this is what Tom's saying. And and every one of them has come true. You know, for sure. The trends that that I tracked a lot in that time was early January of 2020 was that, you know, it's what's going to happen. When's it going to break? When are we going to get vaccinated? And so, that happened to start on May that we reached that first thing. So that was an important trend to track because you could see when we got to a point when things would start to open up. And then the second wave is really based on the fact that did we comply with the first wave? Well, we're, this is not going to be universal, but there is a large percentage of states. And again, I don't care about your politics. I, I don't want to see them on social media, but I don't care about your politics, no matter which side you're in. But there's a high number of states that are not reaching vaccination goals and they're having hospitals fill up again. Uh, I was reading one about an interview with a Midwest doctor 
And he's saying like, we were down to 20 people in the, um, our unit, intensive care unit, and we were celebrating because we thought we could see the end, but we thought we would be, we read about this group of hospitals in our state that got down to zero. He said, we were already partying and celebrating. And then two weeks later, we had 90 people in here. Wow. And he was talking about a, that, that person in the 20 and 30s. He says, they're dying at a, a faster rate because of the Delta variant that they're bulletproof. They come in, even when they put them on, um, they you know, intubate them and stuff, they, they, they're, they're gone and faster, quicker. Uh, sadly, more brutally, it's a much, it's even a more horrible death, even when you're on the ventilator. And it's there, there's a trend pointing that, that we're going to see this and um, time frame. everything points to after the holiday, uh, meaning, sep you know, September after Labor Day, that as we start to move back inside in the Northern states, and the southern states start to pick up more parties and things, Florida, for example. Uh, Florida is a perfect example. It only has 45% vaccination rates. So, but it's, Disney's open. Uh, the beaches are open. Uh, you're gonna have that last wave of college kids coming down in the, the late summer. There's always that family wave coming in. So. Every country in the world that's open to travel is still coming to Florida. Every state that can get down there, people are taking that big vacation because I haven't taken my kids anywhere in two years. You know, I'm going to take my kids to Disneyland and drink five more, you know, five martinis in a sippy cup. You know, I've got to get out. And there's Florida, I think, is an example that you're going to see whether they shut it down or not, you're going to see a very, very high pounding in late September, early October, that may even take us back a level where they may have to do some type of lockdown again, oh, no. some kind of restriction. I don't think we'll go all the way back that we're out of business again, but they may go back and say, look, you're back to 50% capacity. Um, if I was in a state right now as a gym operator and my state vaccination rate was under 60%, I'd be really start to think about what it's going to be in the fall. And again, I'm, I'm looking for a second wave in some states to kind of affect our business again. Again, not to the extent it did last year, but it's going to, it's going to get us uh, where we might have some kind of restrictions we have to operate on. And I think that'll start in late September and probably continue through till the end of the year. Okay. So, um, and what does that mean? I've been trying to get everybody I work with, anybody that listen to me, to go back and look at what you do in the business. And if you're, if you're, you know, one on one, it's very viable, still works. But mod modify your gym into the pod system, which I've been teaching for years, where you have the gyms within a gym. Put a lot of emphasis on small group because in 300 feet, we've actually taken kettlebells and put funny names on them and laid them out in gyms in 300 feet to figure out. So four, four people and a coach can actually social distance themselves within 300 feet and never really come into contact. We know 300 feet is a perfect space for that because it allows the distancing, but still allows us to train as a group. So we know that happens. So that would be something I would look at. So the training gyms that get are under restrictions should have the ability to function and even still make money because I don't think we're going to go back to zero. We're going to go back to some type of limitations. Will we see the mask again? I think the masks are going to have to be a factor. I think it's going to be voluntarily for a lot of people. Um, I see people where I live now that we're, we're all, this particular county and city is highly vaccinated, but I still see people now putting masks on going back into grocery stores that I didn't even see three weeks ago because they're afraid of the, the Delta variant and taking it to other people in their lives that are not vaccinated. So I think you're gonna see the mask start to come back a little more. I think you're gonna see a kind of second wave. If your state is over 60% vaccinated, the magic number is 67%. That's where you reach some type of minimal herd immunity. If we go from, if you're up around 70%, something like that, 
you're probably not going to see any of the restrictions. Or if you do, they'll be very moderate, just maybe a couple of limitations on the number of people in the gym at a time and training gyms. We should have learned our lesson last year. You know, if, you know, if you're dependent on nothing but team training, you get corrected again, it could be tough. But the certain states like that shouldn't be affected. So, you you know, check your state's vaccination rate. That's going to be an indication of what the fall is going to be. The wave is here. July is good. August, even in the states that are totally open and no pushback, will be flat because everybody in the world is going to Disneyland, meaning we're on vacation September on, and we, I predicted this all the way through, and every indicator is pointing toward this still happening is you'll make more money in September through probably uh, May of next year than you probably have in many years because there's a client that's wanting to come back in, but the client has changed. And that's another problem is you can't go back and do a, a six, uh, you know, 15 day kickstart. You can't go back and do these bikini programs. You can't go back and do this type of stuff because the consumers coming in now, if you think about it, everybody coming in the gym almost is a fitness virgin because most of the people haven't been in a gym in a year and a half. That's so true. everybody coming in is a start over. Yep. It's a so, reset. It's a total reset. So yeah, but we don't teach them that way. We don't think about that. So if I'm not ready in September for this new client coming in in big waves, the client needs more help. They want to go slower. They're not, you can't assume that I can throw them into a group within three days. They, everything needs to slow down. Everything needs to pace itself out. And how you market to this client is different because they don't respond. They're, they're just like, I don't give a damn about bikini season. I don't want to die this winter because everybody, you know, there's a 60% of our people out here believe this virus is horrible because we're at least that we're pretty far along is a national average, but it's state by state that's causing the problem. So the states that are wide open are going to be insanely busy but we can't go back to our 2019 business plan because it doesn't work for this new client. So if you change your business plan, your, your gym is set up to handle maybe even moderate restrictions, uh, you're going to make more money in 12 months than you probably made in your whole life. But I, I, can't, I, I don't see enough gym owners as of today ready to exploit that. So this, okay, so, this is, so you, you've given me the grim news, 67% or less. You know, there could be more restrictions coming our way. You've given me really good looking news, which is the most money I've ever probably made is, is on the cards, but I'm not ready for it. So break down, like you hit upon a few things, right? Break down what are the things that I should get rid of and what are the things I should embrace to get ready for if I am in that 67 or less than 60% uh, vaccinated state. What, what, what should I do more of? What should I do less of? Well, the, and those states are public knowledge. So, you know, it's, it's places like Florida, Mississippi, um, most of Texas county by county there. There's uh, places in the Midwest that are falling into those states. There's states that, you know, if your state average is 40, 45%, um, that means that that's an interesting thing. I saw another interview with a doctor uh, and this guy looked beaten. I mean, he looked like he was from the mid to 2020. I mean, he was that look. Um, and he said, he said that 97% of everybody that's coming through now is been unvaccinated people. So if the, der the, the Delta variant does accelerate, which they think it will because of the weather change and people are more tend to be heading indoors, then it's bringing a younger wave to this. So that 25, 35 year old person is now the one getting the variant because they're the ones that didn't get vaccinated. So if I've got a training gym based on team training and my city is 40% vaccinated, uh, I, I think you gotta be looking at that number and saying, ooh, that could really hurt me. You know, as always, I say this, the disclaimer is I hope I'm wrong. I, I, I hope I'm incredibly wrong. And people will Tom, that prediction was absolute total, you know, bull crap. Good. I'm okay with that. 
But statistically, if you're in a town that, for, you know, your state's 45% vaccination rate and your market is 25 to 40 year old people and they're not vaccinated, the chances that the, the variant is going to take them down is pretty damn strong. It's going to affect your business. Now, maybe only a moderate restriction because none of those states, their governments want to go back to full lockdown with masks. They just will refuse to do it. But just because they refuse to do it doesn't mean it's not going to affect your business as your clients go down. So it doesn't matter what they do. They may say, no, no masks, no restrictions, but that doesn't mean it's not going to destroy your business. If I asked you know, today 100 gym owners, how many of you have easy time finding employees? What would the answer be? 100% no. There's no employees. Well, what do you think is going to happen if that virus rips through a town where even trainers are getting sick because they were not vaccinated in that group? It, it, it business could be really hard in those states. So what to do to prepare for that? Yeah, one, if you're in a state and your, your overall vaccination rate is 60% or less, assume that you may have some challenges you might want to prepare for in September, October, November. Okay, so first of all, I've got to look at my gym. You know, can I modify the gym in August and put some pod systems in? Pod meaning 300 foot gyms with redundant equipment so I can segregate people. That makes, that's common sense. I don't want to drag an elite client all over the gym anyway. So if I've got, you know, uh, 2,500 feet, I can put three pods in that takes up 900 feet, but now I've got four gyms. I got, you know, my main space and three mini gyms. So now I can run 12 people segregated. So if the state says, no, we're going 50% restrictions, we need to segregate. Yes, sir, I'm ready, let's go doesn't even affect my business plan. So if you're a large team guy and you run groups of 30, 40, 50, and you get mandated back down, then that in your state, then that's going to affect you. You need to prepare for that now. Can I dilute that business by getting into small group and one-on-one and launch that program in August and September? And maybe start to dilute that. You and I have talked in the past about that, you know, that 24 to 36 year old client, 35 to 55. Well, most of the guys that just do team training are 90, 80% of the clients or so are in that 24 to 36 range. So I can limit my exposure by putting more money into different layers where I have multiple layers of clients. So if I lose one segment, I don't lose my business because I've got three segments that I'm that are there. The older, more fluent client is more likely to get vaccinated. So that's so I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of preparing the fact that if I lose one segment, I still got two other to keep paying me. Like right. multiple clients, multiple types of clients. That's something I'd look at is can I, you know, stop segregating into one dimension and start to expand my concept into multiple dimensions. So that, that would be something I look at. Another thing is reserve capital. Um, you know, we, we know the pattern. If you go into restriction like that, you're going to, it's, you need an extra month or two of reserve capital. If you're, if you go restrictions for 90 days, uh, so we need to think about, you know, refinancing debt now. We need to looking at our overall, how did we come out of the virus? I look at a lot of the gyms that closed last year, training gyms, and I would say a solid, solid 10% of the closures, uh, especially in markets like California, Jersey, places like that, were self-inflicted wounds, that they were so angry at the states and the mandates that they fought so hard to defy those mandates that they lost their businesses. So guy in Jersey, I'm, they say mask, I'm not wearing mask in here. I'm not gonna ask my clients to do that. Guy lost his gym. Huh, I wonder how, why? Because 70% of the people in his state wanted them to wear mask. So he, why defy yourself out of business? So you have to look at this. Are you the worst problem in your business? Are you the problem? Right. And you're going to have to make a decision if they do slip backwards in the mandates and you do see masks start to come back in in grocery stores and gyms and public places. I don't know, but I would certainly, everything points, everything points in the states with less than 60% vaccination rate that there's a second wave that may affect how we have to do business in starting in mid-September, October, November, probably going into the first of the year. By that time, they think that, that that will force enough people to get vaccinated that we will reach a point where the virus is, because there's no vaccinations, then the virus can get a hold of, if everybody would have vaccinated, the Delta variant would have bounced off more people. 
but because it has a home on vaccinated people, it's getting a foothold in states. So the, the, those people eventually, when they see somebody die, 30 year old guy die a horrible death, oh, like maybe I better get my ass vaccinated. They think that the wave of people that are suffering through here will actually drive up vaccinations by the people previously hesitant because it's either get vaccinated or be on TV dying a horrible death with a ventilator. And your last words are, and I actually saw this on an interview, the guy's last words were, he said, I, I denied it. I just, I, I, I don't talk to tell anybody anything now. I, you know, I was wrong. And then he died, you know, a couple of days later he was gone. And I hope we don't have to get to that point to do it. But if you're in a state over 67% and, you know, people, and that's going to increase somewhat, you should be okay. There may be minor restrictions uh, going and that will be load limits and all training gyms by now, you should have learned that lesson. You should be ready to be able to function under the load limits. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you once again for sharing that, bringing that up to surface now, you know, talking about it, I guess no one's talking about this and, like you've always said, you've got to be prepared.